I've met with Dada uh, in 2000 at CalArts, actually. Um, and I worked with him, I studied with him for a while, uh, as well as other composers. I was in the composition program at CalArts. Um, and I uh, didn't work with Wadada for a long time, and I began working with him again uh, with his organic uh, band, the electric band. And I did some visuals for him for those shows that he was doing uh, in Europe. and. Uh, Right around that time was when he was finalizing the 10 Freedom Summers project. So I became involved with the premiere uh, at Red Cat, as you asked, and I've, I've basically been on pretty much every performance of it since then uh, that has had any visuals. There's been a few, I think, that's just been the music. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been, I've been traveling with him. And, uh, you know, the challenge with this project has to do with, you know, it's dealing with material which is more than 50, 60 years old in some cases. Um, I knew what Dada wanted some archival footage, some archival images, so that we could reference that time period and bring some of the, the music into that context for people, since he doesn't announce the titles. He doesn't generally do that. Um, but he was very clear that he didn't want it to be a slideshow or as kind of, a, you know, lecture about the civil rights movement, right? That it was really an artistic exploration. And so the show's been developing since the premiere. Uh, we've incorporated um, different elements. So initially we had the historical images, live camera work, and um, the abstract animation that I create, which is connected to the sound itself. So over time, it sort of has clarified to me that we're visually asking some questions about what does it mean to be making work about a, a, a distant historical event? How do we make those images relevant and real? How do we make those ideas about human rights relevant to an audience where you're not necessarily giving them a text or, you know, talking at them, but you're, you're trying to get at some kind of the, the emotional part of what all of this meant. Um, and so as a visual designer, I'm trying to uh, merge those historical images, composite them with images of the band, and then something which represents this process of listening that you're doing as you see the images, um, that it sort of reflects what's going on inside of your ear. So that's my little niche in the visual design world because I, I started as a composer and performer of music and now move it into a visual world that I, I'm exploring, but it's about listening generally. My work is about listening. So um, the hope is that the images help people to you know, go further into the music and to, to feel, feel the music more deeply rather than distract from the the listening, which is what, of course, most people going to see Wadada's work are going to see him. They're going to see the music um, or hear the music. So when they have a visual experience, my hope is that they're um, connecting to their own memories of that time or to their own impressions of the, the, the people that we're referencing, but also that they feel that it's been brought into some kind of a contemporary visual space that makes sense to people who, like me, who were born after the civil rights movement, um, you know, where we we're always accessing these images uh, in retrospect, and they're they're these distant black and white images, right? But the the ideas are very relevant to our time, even now. <laughs> 